Dynamic balance was developed by Mark Rabert, who founded the MIT Leg Laboratory in the 1980s. To keep this simple, he started with one-legged robots. I saw this video when I was a kid, and I was immediately intrigued at these weird-looking robots that I guess were robots. They didn't look like the Jetsons robots. They didn't look like C-3PO, but they were intriguing. And I thought about this, and I've had this video in my head for my entire life. Then one day, I found out that the people who made these robots went on to create Boston Dynamics and create the impressive robots, Spot, Atlas, who knows, all the others. <laughs> but I was always intrigued, and I found out that this team wrote a book about these robots, how the control algorithms work, how they built the robots, what they learned from all of that. And I thought that I want to learn from their experiences. I want to read this book. But it's a very difficult book to get your hands on. It's, well, it's not difficult, it's just expensive. Well, I wanted to read this book, so I paid the big bucks, and I wanted to force myself to take it seriously. And so I thought I would start a little series here on the channel and read the book. I thought maybe uh, throw in some videos, throw in some pictures, and see where things go from there. Hopefully you'll find this uh, experience educational, and hopefully we'll all learn something through it. So enjoy. This book is about machines that use legs to run. They are dynamic machines that balance themselves actively as they travel about the laboratory. The purpose of these machines is to learn about the principles of legged locomotion, particularly those underlying control and balance. Such principles can help us to understand animal locomotion and to build useful legged vehicles. The first chapter explains why legged locomotion is an important problem. It provides the reader with some background on the general topic of legged machines, and it highlights the results reported in the chapters that follow. Why study legged machines? Aside from the sheer thrill of creating legged machines that actually run, there are two serious reasons for exploring the use of legs for locomotion. One reason is mobility. There's a need for vehicles that can travel in difficult terrain, where existing vehicles cannot go. Wheels excel on prepared surfaces such as rails and roads, but most places have not yet been paved. Only about half the Earth's landmass is accessible to existing wheeled and tracked vehicles, whereas a much larger fraction can be reached by animals on foot. It should be possible to build legged vehicles that can go to the places that animals are already able to reach. One reason legs provide better mobility in rough terrain than do wheels or tracks is that they use isolated footholds that optimize support and traction whereas a wheel requires a continuous path of support. As a consequence, the mobility of a legged system is generally limited by the best footholds in the reachable terrain, and a wheel is limited by the worst terrain. A ladder provides a good example. Its steepest parts prohibit ascent on wheels, while the flattest parts, the rungs, enable ascent using legs. Another advantage of legs is that they provide an active suspension that decouples the path of the body from the paths of the feet. The payload is free to travel smoothly, despite pronounced variations in the terrain. A legged system can also step over obstacles. In principle, the performance of legged vehicles can, to a great extent, be independent of the detailed roughness of the ground. A legged system uses this decoupling to increase its speed and efficiency on rough terrain. The construction of useful legged vehicles depends on progress in several areas of engineering and science. Legged vehicles will need systems that control joint motions, cycle the use of legs, monitor and manipulate balance, generate motions to use known footholds, sense the terrain to find good footholds, and calculate negotiable foothold sequences. Most of these tasks are not well understood yet, but research is underway. If this research is successful, it will lead to the development of legged vehicles that travel efficiently and quickly in terrain where soft gray softness grade, or obstacles make existing vehicles ineffective. 
Such vehicles will be useful in industrial, agricultural, and military applications. A second reason for exploring machines that use legs for locomotion is to understand human and animal locomotion. One need watch only a few instant replays on television to be awed by the very variety and complexity of ways athletes can carry, swing, toss, glide, and otherwise propel their bodies through space, maintaining orientation, balance, and speed as they go. Such performance is not limited to professional athletes. Behavior at the local playground is equally impressive from a mechanical engineering, sensory motor integration, or computational point of view. Perhaps most exciting is the sight of one's own child advancing rapidly from creeping and crawling to walking, running, hopping, jumping, and climbing. Animals also demonstrate great mobility and agility. They move quickly and reliably through forest, swamp, marsh, and jungle, and from tree to tree. Sometimes they move with great speed, often with efficiency. Despite excellence in using our own legs for locomotion, we are still at a primitive stage in understanding the control principles that underlie walking and running. What control mechanisms do animals use? One way to learn more about the plausible mechanisms for animal locomotion is to build machines that locomote using legs. To the extent that an animal and a machine perform similar locomotion tasks, their control systems and mechanical structures must solve similar problems. By building machines, we can get new insights into these problems, and we can learn about the possible solutions. Of particular value is the rigor required to build physical machines that actually work. Concrete theories and algorithms can guide biological research by suggesting specific models for experimental testing and verification. This sort of interdisciplinary approach is already becoming popular in those areas where biology and robotics have a common ground, such as speech, vision, and manipulation. Dynamics and balance improve mobility. The work reported in this book focuses on a dynamic treatment of legged locomotion with particular attention to balance. This means that the legged system study operate in a regime where velocities and kinetic energies of the masses are important determinants of behavior. In order to predict the influence of behavior on a, of a dynamic system, one must consider the energy stored in each mass and spring, as well as the geometric structure and configuration of the mechanism. Geometry and configuration taken along do not provide an adequate model when a system moves with substantial speed or has large mass. Consider, for example, a fast-moving vehicle that would tip over if stopped suddenly with its center of mass too close to the front feet. The exchange of energy among its various forms is also important in understanding the dynamics of legged locomotion. For example, there is a cycle of activity in running that changes the form of stored energy several times. The body's potential energy of elevation changes to kinetic energy during the fall, then to strain energy when parts of the leg deform elastically during rebound with the ground, then into kinetic energy again as the body accelerates upward, and fa finally back into potential energy of elevation. This sort of dynamic exchange is central to an understanding of legged locomotion. A dynamic treatment, however, does not imply an intractable treatment. Although the detailed dynamics of legged systems may indeed be complicated, control techniques that use dynamics may be simple. For example, if hopping is primarily a resonant bouncing motion, then a control system with the task of regulating hopping need not actively servo the body along a specified trajectory. It can simulate and modulate the bouncing motion by delivering a thrust of the right magnitude just once during each cycle. Control systems can generally be made simpler if they are tuned to the dynamics of the me mechanism they control and to the task of the mechanism performs. A specific goal of the work reported in this book is to identify and explore control techniques that use dynamics in simple ways. Dynamics also plays a role in giving legged systems the ability to balance actively. A statistically balanced system avoids tipping and the ensuing horizontal accelerations by keeping the center mass of the body over 
the polygon of support formed by the feet. The feet and body move according to a gait pattern that maintains the support relationship. Animals sometimes use this sort of balance when they move slowly, but they usually balance actively. A legged system that balances actively can tolerate departures from static equilibrium. Unlike a statically balanced system, which must always operate in or near equilibrium, an actively balanced system is permitted to tip and accelerate for short periods of time. The control system manipulates body and leg motions to ensure that each tipping interval is brief, and that each tipping motion in one direction is compensated by tipping motion in the opposite direction. An effective base of support is maintained over time. A system that balances actively may also permit vertical acceleration, such as the bouncing feet that occur when the legs deform elastically, and the ballistic travel that occurs between bounces. The ability of an actively balanced system to depart from static equilibrium relaxes the rules on how legs can be used for support. This leads to improved mobility. For example, if a legged system can tolerate tipping, then it can position the feet far from the center of mass in order to use footholds that are widely separated or erratically placed. If it can maintain upright with a small base of support, then it can travel where obstructions are closely spaced or where the path of firm support is narrow. The ability to tolerate intermittent support also contributes to mobility. It allows a system to move all its legs to new footholds at one time, to jump, and to use ballistic motions for increased speed. These abilities to use narrow base and intermittent support generally increase the types of terrain a legged system can negotiate. Animals routinely exploit active balance to travel quickly on difficult terrains. Legged vehicles will have to balance actively too, if they are to move with animal-like mobility and speed.